So one of this administration's favorite things to do is to try to get rid of our Second Amendment and blame it on gun violence. Now, gun violence can mean several different things, but if you were a part of a culture that glorifies it, and if you don't know what I mean, listen to a plethora of different rap songs and you'll hear in there that they're just shooting each other. If you partake in that, I really don't think that should be included in gun violence. It's something that's on purpose. It's something that's glorified. It's something that people enjoy doing or they think it's badass. So when Biden gives a press conference and he says, well, gun violence is really bad in this country, how many of those are gang shootings? How many of those are people who just think it's cool to do? I don't think it's cool. Most people here don't think it's cool. The Second Amendment was not created to fulfill criminal activities. The Second Amendment was created to protect our liberties, protect our freedoms, protect ourselves. So when stuff like what I'm going to go over today happens, I think the punishment should be very severe. I mean, serious. If y'all want to crack down on people who use guns for criminal activities, wouldn't the logical thought process be, well, maybe we should toughen up the punishment for people who go into a grocery store and rob the place with a gun. Or maybe we should toughen up the consequence for people who do drive-by shootings. But no, we got a judge in Washington, D.C., who is about as woke as it gets, who let a guy who was accused of firing 26 shots at a car out on bail. What the fuck is this? So Judge Nolan, the man who released this guy out on bail, has donated to George Soros. Imagine that. Now, I believe in justice. I believe some people deserve a second chance, depending on how you own the situation. That's a lost art nowadays. People don't know how to just say, you know what, that was pretty messed up of me. Uh, here's how I'm going to fix it. Here's how I'm fixing my life. Let's move on and I'm going to become a better person. People don't really do that anymore especially companies. And if you think a judge is gonna do that, keep dreaming. But isn't this how it goes? We've got ATF agents and FBI agents monitoring Americans for Facebook posts, for having more rounds in their gun than they want, for having plastic attachments on their guns. And they are prosecuting those people. People who have done nothing wrong, they haven't done anything criminal, they haven't went to a gas station, robbed a spot, or done a mass shooting, but simply because they have an attachment or more rounds or whatever, they're getting prosecuted. Yet, people like this are let out on bail. I mean, can you imagine what the judge said to the guy? What was he thinking? Hey, try to do better next time. Only shoot maybe 10 rounds instead of 26. Now this is kind of where the story takes a turn here. Judge Lloyd U. Nolan, had a bunch of very interesting Facebook posts. And look, if you're a judge, you better be as impartial as they get. But check these Facebook posts out. Black power and you're a judge. Is that why you let this guy out? Because he's black? I mean, let's throw it all on the table here. What if it was a white guy? Well, let me tell you, if it was a white guy, it would be all over the news as a mass shooting. Not a, oh, well, let's give him a chance and let's let him out on bail. He probably, his finger slipped. 2019 still woke. <clears throat> so I have a feeling that you're probably not super impartial when it comes to a white guy versus a black guy in court. You're probably not super impartial in terms of if a conservative person went into your court or someone who supports America versus one of these woke people who's like, yeah, I hate America, but I still live here and I still get all the benefits of living here, but I hate it here. Washington, D.C. has seen this incredible uh, uptick in violent crimes, finally hitting uh, the homicide record that was actually predicted several months ago by uh, the police union and by others. And what we have seen this year in the district, despite all of the violent crime, is uh, the uh, the council there um, was tried really hard to change the entire criminal code in the district to make it, frankly, uh, make the laws more lenient toward criminals. You know, Washington, D.C. already has some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Um, 
But for the last three years, you have seen the vilification and the demonization of their police department. I mean, sincerely, look at the irony of this. They are radically trying to get rid of semi-automatic rifles off the street. AR-15s, AK-47s, anything that's semi-automatic. But when someone uses one in a way that no one here agrees with, all of a sudden it's, oh no, it's all good. Let's let him out on bail because of black power. Let's flip it around one more time. What if there was a judge out there who had white power posts on his Facebook and then let a white guy out who did the same thing? Joe Biden would be up on his stand talking about it. There would be riots in the street. But here we are in 2024 where the government wants to completely disarm us, yet they let someone out like this. Where's the consistency? I mean, how do you have a mass population of people say, yeah, we think that they're doing a pretty good job? when you can't even be consistent with your policy. It's just goofy.